Hey folks, we've all seen this scene in the movies. The good guy, which is usually a detective, gets that emergency call and then all of a sudden he needs to get his hands on a car to drive there. But for whatever reason he doesn't have a car, so what he ends up doing is just gets in a random car, touches two wires together, hot wires it, and goes on his way. I got no choice, I gotta get my hands on a car and hot wire it. Aha, there's one. Get it. Don't be afraid, sir. I'm a police officer, but I'll need your car. Okay, officer, you can have it. Ow! Ow! Why'd you do that? I said you can have it! Alright, how the hell do you hotwire these things? Wait a minute, keys are still in it. Hmm, I think that was the wrong movie. I think it's actually the bad guy that does this, right after he escapes from prison. Because, you know, planning a complicated prison break is easy. But making sure you have a getaway car, not so much. Yeah, this looks fine. I'll take it. That's it. That was the right movie. But the question is, can you actually hotwire a car like you see it in the movies and simply drive off into the sunset? So if you want to find out, I recommend you watch this video all the way to the end. Not only will you have an answer to that question, but you will also learn a lot about your car's starting system. All right, now in order to be able to hotwire a car, you're going to need access to the wires that come out of the ignition switch, which is usually at the end of your ignition lock and cylinder assembly. Now obviously it's missing on this, but I'll show it to you on the car. Now in order to gain access to the ignition switch, you might have to remove a couple things depending on where the ignition lock cylinder assembly is located. So for this car, since this is located here, we're gonna have to remove this kick panel to gain access to the back of this. See on a lot of cars, the ignition assembly is located on the steering column. In which case you would then have to remove these screws on the bottom of the cover before you can remove it. But in our case, we just have to remove these screws around the circumference of this kick panel before we can remove it. There we go. All right, so here's the end of our ignition lock and cylinder assembly and our ignition switch is back there. I can't get you a straight shot, but uh, we got the, all the wires coming out of it, which is all we're gonna need. And in fact, here's the connector for it, which is gonna make our job easier. All right, next we need to identify three sets of wires. First, our battery voltage supply wires. And as you can see, we got two of them here, which is gonna be this white wire and this white and red wire. And these are always gonna be thicker gauged wires, as you can see here. Next, we need to identify the two wires that take the power from these two wires and supply it to our body control module and our power control module. So basically, you always have battery voltage here. And then when you put in the key and turn it to the on position, you set battery voltage to your uh, body and electronic control module, turning on all the lights on your dash and also getting your car ready for a start. And these second set of wires are generally gonna be the same gauge as the power wires and I'm actually gonna remove this connector to show you guys better. All right, so on this connector, these two were our battery voltage supply wires. We got one thick gauge wire here, another one in front of that, and then one more, this black and yellow one, is also a thicker gauge wire. So on this car, this black and orange one is gonna be for the electronic control module for our engine. This black and yellow one back here is for our body control module, and this pink and blue one is for our accessories. Oh, and I almost forgot, the third wire you need to identify is the starter signal wire. Now you usually have just one wire and, this, and for this car it's going to be this black and white wire. Alright, so next if you didn't have access to the connector, you would need to cut all these wires that we just identified. But since we do have access to the connector, all we have to do is just to use a piece of wire to jump the connections between the power and the wires supplying all the control modules. So first I'm going to jump the connection between this white and red wire and this black and orange wire, which is for our electronic control module, like that. And then use another piece of wire to jump the connection between this power supply wire and this black and yellow wire for our body control module. And once we connect this one, all the lights on our dash should come on. And once those two are connected, you don't have to worry about this pink wire for your accessories. Next, all you have to do is to supply 12 volts to this starter signal wire. Now if you have two starter wires, you just want to touch those wires together temporarily to crank your engine. But most cars are just going to have one starter wire. Here we go. There we go. And here's another shot. Alright, let's go around the bank. And then if you need to turn off the car, you just disconnect these wires. That's it. Alright, great. We got the car started, but what are we going to do? But our wheel lock. We did not think this bank robbing thing through, did we? 
And there you have it folks, hot wiring a car doesn't work like the way you see it in the movies. Even if you get the car started like we did, you're going to be unable to turn the wheel to the left or to the right because of the wheel lock. And also on the newer cars, they have chips and other uh, anti-theft devices in the cars that practically make cars impossible to hot wire. So next time you decide to break out of prison or to rob a bank, make sure you have your getaway car ready. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, do me a favor and share this video on your favorite social network. And also check out these other related videos that I'll put links to on this side of the screen. There'll also be links in the description box. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.